my name is Rob Ross, and I live in Apple Valley. Oh, I gotta tell my iPad is okay. There we go. I live in Apple Valley. I play fiddle, mandolin, tenor banjo, and just got a tenor guitar. So, and weird stuff. Uh, down here, I met a bunch of neat people that had a jam going. Walter Sigtrman is one of the, the prime criminals in that, and it's called the South of the River Jam, SOTR. So I've been hanging with them, and I like to play fiddle tunes. And over the years, I bought a ton of fiddle books. I got, you know, I got the, my son a mandolin. Really nice fiddle books, stacks of them, because you want to have all those neat tunes. Because sometimes you, you know, you hear it and you don't have a recording of it, and you don't really know how to play it, so you get a fiddle book. And sometimes you have a stack of fiddle books that big for five tunes, you know. So uh, I found online this neat thing called ABC Notation, where you can, using just the notes on a keyboard, you can enter music and save it electronically and have it anywhere you want, or you can print it out as sheet music. So if there's a song you want that you don't have the sheet music for, chances are really good somebody has already encoded it into ABC Notation and you can have it. So I started messing with this years ago. And when I joined the South River uh, group, I was very happy to find that Walter was doing this stuff too. I was like, yes, somebody else who likes this stuff. So we started putting a bunch of tunes together in tune books. So we had the South River tune book and Walter started it, did a huge amount. And I've been just throwing crap at it every month. And uh, it's just basically people say, hey, I want to hear this one. So we go dig it up. I try to avoid... You know, I, I don't like to go to a book that's got copyrighted stuff and steal their stuff. I don't like to do that. Technically, copyrights go back to almost 75, 80 years now, 100 years almost. So it's kind of hard and hard if you're playing anything that's bluegrass or uh, any stuff written in the, the 30s or 40s. So we try to stay with the older stuff, but occasionally stuff sneaks in. And we're... Anyway, um, ABC notation. What is this nonsense? So I'm going to start sharing screens a lot. Hey, there's Kathy. Cool. So uh, let's just say, where am I looking here? I don't want that. I want this. Let's say that somebody says, hey, that's a nice song you're playing. How's it go? Get your phone out, record it. Well, I left my phone at home. He says, you got, you got a piece of paper and a pencil? And said, yeah, I got some right here. And said, well, let's see. The first note, um, first note's a, a D and an E. So it's da, D, E. And there's a long F sharp. And you write down D, E, F sharp. It's a long one. And then you write down E, F, sharp, and it's a G, it's a long one. So you start writing out stuff that looks like this. And I've done that before, just, you know, just to get the first few notes down, you're figuring out. And then you can go home or your friend might oh, give you some sheet music. Sorry. And um, you, uh, you, you write it down and you get this ugly looking thing like that. And you go, oh, God, your friend wants some music that looks like that. It, well, it's got the it's got all the notes and there's a repeat in there and there's the chords in there. But wouldn't it be nicer if you could just say, well, yeah, here's the tune you were playing. Oh, yeah, I can read that. There's there's chords and there's repeats and it's legible. And somebody wrote a little thing down at the bottom. And so that's what ABC notation does. Um, Where it come from? Well, people have been writing the notes down for, for centuries, probably. Uh, you can find uh, a lot of people have written music down in that format one way or another. But in the 80s, there's a guy named Chris Walshaw hitchhiking across Europe playing tunes uh, that didn't know how to write notation, but he knew how to write A, B, F, G, D, E. So he'd write stuff down and he ended up in a band where he was playing French bagpipes. And I got to say that because how many people play French bagpipes? Um, and his buddies in his band wanted copies of his music. So he'd have to write it out by hand. And he didn't want to do that. So he was a software guy. He had gone to college, learned how to be a computer person. So he knew there's a couple of programs out there that if you gave it the right input would produce sheet music. So he took that and he built a little front end where he could write down his notes, F, A, B, C, whatever. And it would spit out sheet music. And he put that out on a, a the prede predecessor of a website on a, a, a bulletin board. And all the people in Irish music that were reading that, hey, that's cool. We get a lot of tunes. So some other tech geeks, a lot of tech geeks in the music world uh, came on board and they created more programs that allowed you to basically sit down at a computer, get your little computer keyboard out, start typing, and it would instantly make music. Um, 
that was the birth of ABC notation. Several people, a lot of people got together and said, well, how do we standardize this? So they came up with several standards and they kind of stalled out. They came up with standard 2.1, they get approved. This is how ABC is supposed to work. Start at 2.2, didn't go anywhere. Um, it's still out there. Some people use it, some people don't. And that was probably about 20 some odd years ago, 30 years ago. Ever since then, people have been building little programs. The only problem with it is they base it on, okay, this will be a Windows program. That'll be a Linux program. This will be an iOS program. And the companies have made their software so much more powerful and security strong that they broke a lot of the things these early ABC programs are built on. So you'll see that a lot of the early ABC programs no longer work, but there are a few out there and there are a few still under development that people are taking care of. And we'll look at a couple of those. Um, so going along with this software analogy, software stuff, uh, ABC uh, treats music kind of like a program. So let me go here. This is, the pro this is a program I use a lot. It's called ABC Explorer. It was written by a guy in France, except he hasn't done anything with it in 13 years. It was written for Windows XP. It runs fine under Windows 10. I have not run it under Windows 11, but I'm going to guess it still works. It looks like a very busy program, and it kind of sort of is. Uh, but let's go ahead and we'll look at just some, some concepts. And I know it's kind of hard to see what's going on, so I try to make my cursor ugly and purple. Over here, it just stores a bunch of different tunes. That's the nice thing about ABC. You can have like, thousands of tunes in a very small file because they're just text characters. So here's a bunch of tunes I have. Over here is what each individual tune is going to look like if I, if I click on it. So here's a polka. And here's what it all, that's the entire tune right there. And here's what it looks like. Gosh, that looks like a polka. And if you didn't believe it, you can go, hey, I know that one. That's John Ryan's polka. So not only can you draw the music out, but you can play the music. And you can do, oh, I found this is fun. And here we go playing along and you don't like that pitch? You can mess around. You can play it slower. You can play it faster. You can play it at any pitch you want. You can have, you can click buttons and it'll transpose the tune up into a hierarchy. So those are the possibilities you have. Plus you can have, I can print out just John Ryan's poke on a piece of paper, or I could print out every tune here or I could go like the south of the river file has got 200 plus tunes and print out a tune book with every single file, tune in it. Um, you can print it out the paper. You can print out individually to JPEG images, bitmap images. You can print it out to one giant PDF tune book. You can print it out directly to your printer, but don't do that, waste a lot of paper. So that's the background. Let's look at some of the stuff going on. Um, I'm gonna go back and let's see, I gotta do this. I apologize for jumping around, but I haven't figured out how to do it in a graceful manner yet. Um, all right. I talk about the, that, that bunch of notes you saw up in the corner starts off with what's called a header. And there's header fields or information fields. And so it's like a computer program, if you're familiar, where you set your variables that you'll be using. You set up certain things that will always be done in this program to a change them down the road. The first thing that we got to know about is this X colon number right here. And that is a, uh, I can make that bigger, can I? Yes, I can, a little bit. Um, that is an index reference number. So every tune you make has to have one, cannot have two or three. You won't work if don't have any. So you always have one number. And the funny thing is that can be any number. Any set of numbers can be good. And they can all be the same. You can have a, a whole bunch of X1, X1, X1. It, it works better if you make it a different number because then you can sort on that. You can uh, order your tunes by that. But for now, just realize you have to have one and just one. The next one's pretty easy. It's a T for the title. What's this song called? It's, this one I stole off Hollow Poplar, a nice little tune. And I got you, I did not put in my uh, the guide if you're reading is you'll notice there's no space right there. If you put a space there, um, if you use a program to alphabetize, it's gonna alphabetize the space before all the letters. And those of you working with Scandinavian tunes, um, 
Scandinavian tunes with accents like the A with an umlaut or A with a little circle go behind Z. So Aprobo Gunglot is behind Zorro's Revenge at the back of the tail. Um, just a little thing to know. The next is the meter. It's really your time signature. What, what do I want this tune into? I want a 4 4, 2 4, 6 8, 12 8. That tells the tune, what, you know, that tells the program what to expect of how many notes and where they're going to be. Once you've got a meter set, then you, you do your, your uh, length of the standard note. And you, know, like, you look at a piece of music, and some of the, let's see, I can do that right here. Uh, no, I can't, not there. Okay, hang on. There we go. You look at a tune and go, well, let's see, there's some, there's some eighth notes, oh, there's a half note, there's an eighth note, half note, eighth note, a dotted quarter, a quarter. So you're kind of looking around, it's all over the board, but you think, if, well, if the average note that I was gonna print out a lot seems to be a quarter note, because there's some bigger ones and shorter ones. So what you would do is you would go back to that, that length of note and you change this to a quarter note, one quarter right there. Uh, if you were working on, oh, look at a lot of notes. Uh, if you're working on a, an average fiddle tune, that's not an average fiddle tune. Sorry, I didn't have this prepared. Oh, look at that. Tons of eighth notes. So I think, yeah, in this tune, we would use eighth notes as our basic. So let's see. That's the length of note. These two are not required for your music. This X is required, this T is required, and the last one, the K is required. These M and L are highly critical. C and O aren't but they're very good to have. And C is the composer. If you know who it is, put the name there. If not, put trad, but there's a lot of music you'll find that's marked trad that is actually written by people out there still alive. Uh, so try to find that out. United States, that's the country of origin. And it's good if you have I, tunes from Ireland and tunes from Shetland and tunes from Canada, you can sort them out if you wish. So let's use that. This last little, uh, not last, this R is a rhythm of the tune and you can put down reel, hornpipe, jig, slip jig, uh, march, air, anything that turns you on. Uh, it does not show up in the printed music, but some of them uh, will affect how it plays back. If you put reel down and you play it like a da 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 If you put hornpipe, it'll go da 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 and give you the hornpipe rhythm. So that does get accounted for by the uh, software. And the last is your key. You gotta have a key, G, D, A, C, B flat, or you can put modes. You could put a D with D, O, R for D Dorian. And I'm not gonna get in how to do that, but you need to do all that stuff. So let me go back and go to another screen one more time. And we'll look to see how somebody wrote this song. This is John Ryan's polka. It's got an X number, 137. The title is John Ryan's. It's traditional. It's from Ireland. The o is Ireland. The meter is 2-4. That's common in polkas. The length of the note they chose was 116. And if you look down at the music, yeah, there's a lot of 16th notes. Uh, this number Q I didn't mention is the uh, speed, the tempo. So they put down 120, so 120 beats per minute. That's the standard dance speed. And this is a very good little code right here, Z. And it's Mary Lou Knack. And if you look at a bunch of older ABC music, you'll see that name a lot. She was in Boston, I believe. She did a lot of the early transcribing of tunes into ABC. Uh, so if you do this, if you create a tune, go ahead and put your name down, put Z and, you know, transcribed on such and such a date in this place, put your, put your email if you feel brave. Um, and then they said it's in the key of D, rhythm is a polka. And then there's all this gobbledygook right here. And now I'm going to go into the gobbledygook and I'm going to try and be real fast because there's so much of it. I'm not going to cover it all because you'd be bored out of your skull. But I'm going to show you the basics of creating a tune and the basics of how does ABC convert all that gobbledygook into music. So I have a blank tune here. And I'll tell you what, I'll just start a blank tune. I'll, go, I'll click the button, there you go. It's gonna come up right here in this particular program, AB 
see explorer and there's another program i'll show you a little bit called easy abc which may be easier for more people and they're still maintaining the program so it's probably a good one for a lot of people to jump on because it works in windows it works in linux it's supposed to work in a mac but don't ask me how because i don't have a mac so i apologize and if you have raspberry pi it'll do that too so we'll look at this one first it's a windows program abc explorer and we'll see how we fill this information. And I do apologize because it's such tiny letters. I've tried making it as big as I can and I really can't make it bigger. So uh, let's give it a title. Uh, it's a happy tune. I'm Rob Ross, I'm from Daytona Beach. Bob Ross is also from Daytona Beach and he does happy little clouds. So I'm gonna do happy little tune here, happy tune. Oh, caps locks, they'll bug the heck out of you. Happy tune, all right. And I'm gonna leave it in four, four time. That's the meter. The length of the note I'm going to use as a quarter note because it just makes it easier for you to see certain things happen. I'll leave it in the key of C. So how do we do ABCs? It's ABCs. So in music, you start in the middle C in a piano. So let's just type a capital C. Hey, I've got a note down here. If you look at the bottom uh, mm -hmm. in this area here, you see I got a note and I can make this bigger. There we go. There's my happy tune. There's my C. So a capital C is this middle C on a piano and then you start typing i'm going to print a space in between each letter just get a little more space here let's see space d hey there's a d e Ooh, cool f uh oh i want a bar line a bar line on your computer if you look at an enter key and on the right side and you look up there's this weird little upright line with a kind of break in the middle and you hold the shift key and you hit that and that gives you a bar line all right, so we left off at F, so we'll go G, A, B, and then I'll go C again, and oh wait, it went down, but I wanna go up. Well, what do I do? And the guy who came up says, well, go switch to little letters, lowercase letters. So let's start again with the C. That's exactly where I want it. Bar line, D, E, F, G, bar line, A, B, C, oh. I'm going off the edge of my screen here. Uh, tell you what, let me uh, let me start this one over. I get rid of that one, and I go down. So A, B, C. Up, oh, the C went down. How do I get the C to go higher? I'm gonna add a little apostrophe. You think there's a note? You think I want to go up? So you use an up symbol. There's a C, D, E, F. It gets up. Oh, I did it backwards. I didn't put the mark. You get the idea. Uh, if I want to go lower, I have to think lower. So I'm going to get these guys out of the way. And a little rule about ABC you can see there's a blank here. There's a blank line. As soon as the program sees a blank line, it thinks it's done with a tune. So anything I push, if you have a problem where you pull out your tune and you've got a lot of stuff written in there and it's not showing up, see if you have a blank line. Uh, it may think you've already, you're done with the tune. So here's C, that's, uh, that's a little C, let's make a big C. All right, there you go. I wanna go lower. Well, you think of adding something that's lower. Well, we got a comma. So let's add a B and it's up there. I don't want it up there. I add a comma, a little note below the B right here. And I do apologize for, so there's a B. Okay, that worked. Let's do, uh, let's do an A comma. Let's do a G comma. And that's as low as a fiddle goes. That's where I'm gonna go as low right here. If I go past that, you start getting into, um, you start getting into bass clef. And we're not gonna mess with bass clef. There's notes about how to do it, how to not do it. But let's just go back to the G on a fiddle. That's how you do a note. That's it. You can go from the low G on a fiddle up to a high uh, B or C or D, and that's all you'll need for most music. And then going, Rob, I need notes that are not that long or, or longer or shorter. So there's my C because I've told it here the length of notes, quarter note. Every time I type a letter, it's just going to come out as a quarter note. All right, now I want. I want an eighth note, that's half a quarter note. So just like in math, you divide things with a little slash. There's a slash, look at that. There's now an eighth note. Let's do another one, there. 
really what you're doing is you're dividing by some number and one slash implies you're dividing by two. So C slash and a two up here gives you a quarter or an eighth note here and C with a slash gives you an eighth note. Now, what if I want something smaller? Get a bigger number to divide the note into. So if a quarter divided by two is an eighth, a quarter divided by four is a 16th. And you can just go nuts with eight and uh, just notes you can't even play. You can see little flags down there. I'm, okay, that's more than enough. Well, Rob, I want dotted notes. I want notes that have dots after them. Well, do I put a, a dot? No, I put a, I put a period there. That doesn't do anything. So it's, again, it's a math thing. We want to divide it. Well, let's divide it by three. And let me see if I can show you. It's, it's got one of those weird, like triple dotted notes that nobody in their right mind can play. So that's not the way we do it. Well, what is a dotted quarter note? Well, it's a quarter note and a half a quarter note, or it's three halves of a quarter note. So we multiply it by three, divide by two. This is the most confusing thing you'll do. Best thing to do is till you get used to it is look at the guide and how did he do that? It's a quarter note. There's basically two eighth notes hiding in a quarter note. And this is three eighth notes hiding in a quarter note. So divide this note in two and add a third one. It's confusing. Just look at the guide. You can go C divided by Let's see, C times three divided by four, and you get a dotted eighth note, and you just keep multiplying that or add. You just got to do the math. It's very confusing. Um, I apologize, but I didn't write it, but it works. Um, so those are ways to get notes uh, longer and shorter. The last thing you normally do to a note is you have a C. Say, Rob, I want a C sharp. Well, how do I do a sharp? Let's put a sharp sign in front. So we'll do sharp sign C. That didn't do anything. Um, so the note will be higher. So we look for a symbol on the keyboard that like implies going up. And if you look at your number six above it, there's a little carrot, that little um, up pointy note. And you type a C and now it's a C sharp. Well, what if you want the C back to where it was? You want the C to equal what it should equal. Well, there's an equal sign. I'll put an equal sign in the C. Now it's a natural. And the last thing I'm gonna do is like, well, I wanted to go down lower for a flat. So you look for something that's low and there's that underscore character and you put a C and now you have a flat. You can do double sharp flats, look it up. All right, so we've got that nonsense out of the way. And, uh, Let's do real quickly some of the ways to break your music up. I showed you a bar line that was above your enter key. There's that little vertical pipe it's called. It's a little up and down line. Okay, there's a bar line. And then you'll see it put a little line right here. If I put two bar lines, I get a double bar line. That's good for breaking a section up. So let's make another section of music here. And we'll put a bar line. And this one, I want to be the last one in the tune. So I put a bar line, I could do the double bar line, but that's not really emphatic. So you look over on your keyboard, there's brackets right above to the left of the enter. And I put a single right bracket. That's that mm. little thing. It puts a nice dark line right there. This, I'm just showing you how it builds up and I'm trying to get through this really quick because it gets really, dull after this, uh, or not dull, it can, it will get really dull. So I'm going to show you some tricks and then we'll get on to how it works in the music. Uh, we did rhythms, right? We did dotted notes. We had C, C, C. What if I want to do like a dotted quarter note followed by an eighth note? So let's see, I remember the math, we go C, make it three times as large and divide it in two. And then we take a C and we divide it. There you have a dot. They said, well, that, that you go nuts remembering that. So the people who came up with this said, well, how about we take a C 
and we want that to be the big note going to a little note. So you look down your keyboard down there to the right above the space bar, there's a little uh, greater than arrow. And it looks like this. I don't know if you can see that. It's a greater than arrow if you're using it in math. And you write another C and it automatically does, this is a dotted and that's a smaller note. And if you were doing eighth notes, C divided, use a little arrow, C divided, Oop, not a question mark. It does the same thing. And seeing that little bar right here, so you've got a flag note here and a flag note here, but there are bars. If you have notes that have flags and you type them next to each other, so here is a note with a flag. If you type one immediately next to it, it joins that flag. So it's a beam, it's called beaming. And you can get carried away, which is not, let's see. You can see that. Nah, that's not gonna work. There we go. You can get carried away and that's not good because you can't read that. So you're gonna to have to physically say, well, I can do four of these in a row mm -hmm. and then make a space. Okay. Keep going off the edge there. Make a space and then the next four will be their own little thing like that. So remember, if it has a flag and you write them close together, they will beam. And that's good because that, it kind of, you know, if you try to read this and singers do this, you'll find a lot of songs written that way. You try to play that. It just makes you stop and gag. I mean, look, uh, what's going on? So we go back and we take the spaces out from between what we wrote down mm. and it beams them up just like Scotty. And if you go to little teeny notes, hey, it beams them nicely too. So remember that. And this is another uh, thing you can work on remembering is let's go ahead and just write, uh, uh, we'll just write a tune here. A, B, I'll go down to C, come back up, uh, C, D. Okay, hey, look, there's a tune. And now I wanna throw in some shorter notes. So let's go E, F, and I'll do a long G. And it notice it automatically knows that that long note does not have a flag, so it spaces it. And I'll put an A, and then I'll put, uh, we'll go back down, we'll go G, F. Oop, then G with a slash, F with a slash. And you have nice readable music down here. Da, 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 da. But up here, it's just all gobbledygook. It's all running together. Mm -hmm. All those notes run together. So try to remember, it's gonna make life so much easier. When you have a bar line, make a space, do your first two connected notes. So there's the E and the F, leave a space. There's a G and an A, leave a space. Here's a G and a G. Let's see if I can make it. The music will, the notation down here will come out nicely. But if you don't leave spaces and you have to go back and troubleshoot up here, what did I do wrong? If everything is rammed together, you're gonna go nuts. So that's just another thing to remember. Oh, da, 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 da. So let's see. Oh, triplets, triplets are fun. Use a lot of triple, triplets like in horn pipes and all that. And triplets work by taking a parentheses. So you look at your number keys overhead to nine, there's the left parentheses and you write a three and then write your notes. Let's just do C, D, E. Oh, oh gotta do something here. One, make that bigger. And two, notice that's, it's a nice little jazz move. Duh, duh, duh. But most triplets we use are eighth note triplets. So in this case, we told it each note's a quarter note. So I gotta go back and put one of those little dividers. So it's a little slash, slash, slash that looks like a triplet um you can change this l uh this length of note unit in the middle of a tune you can change it i'm going to do that right here you make a bracket there's the if you type in most programs if you type the left bracket or the left curly bracket which is right above it it puts your cursor right in the middle of two 
So I'm going to enter something in that. I'm going to write L colon one eighth. And what that is, is that says, okay, from now on, all the note lengths are an eighth quarter, you know, an eighth note. So I'll write the same thing I did before. I'll put a parentheses and a three because I'm going to make a triplet. C, D, E. Look at that, triplets. Um, you want to get really weird, you could do a sextuplet. C, D, E, F, G. Uh, no, I guess I can't. Four. What went on wrong there? I don't know. Ah, let's well, stick with triplets. You can do tuplets, and I don't know why I can't do it right now. Uh, let me try something. Oh, maybe. <sighs> no. All right, just do triplets. I apologize. Uh, moving right along, because we can get to the more fun stuff. Oh, you want to do a tune, but you want a rest in the next measure. A rest is a little z. Look at that. And it's just like the letters, whatever. Uh, the L14, it says up here, I'm using a quarter note. So whatever letter I print is going to be that type of note. So that's a quarter note rest. I could do two. There's two. What if I just did Z2? Oh, wow. That little box, that's a half note rest right there. It's on the top of the B line. If I went Z4, a four note rest, that's a little box hanging from the D. And I'll just show that capital Z does the same thing. So if you really want a full measure, you just write capital D Z and you get a full measure. And if you write Z with a number, you get, uh, it's going away here. You get a three. We don't use that much in traditional music. So just remember, rests are little Z's and you treat them just like a number Z2 or you can go Z divided, that's an eighth note rest. Z divided again, that's a 16th. And if you really need a funky dotted rest, it works just like the letters. So look at how the letters work and do that. And any major questions right now? I'm trying not to, I'm trying to do this rather rapidly because a lot of neat other stuff that is more, you can find this by pouring through the manual or any one of the guides online. There's a lot of good guides online. Look at theirs too. Um, you can do grace notes. Look up how to do that. Ties and slurs. Sometimes you want to tie music. So say you're going A, A, C, A, B, A, D. And you want to tie this and play another D. Like So you've got a measure with a D in it. And you want to tie these two notes down here. What you do is you go to the first one of these notes, that's a D, I look up here, here's my D, and you put a hyphen, a little dash. That's up uh, next to your letter zero on the numeral bar. And that ties the two notes right here. And when you play it, it should come out tied. It did, cool. Um, there's, there is a glitch in most ABC software that it never plays the first note. So what you can do when you want to hear the first note is just put a little rest in here. That's not a little rest. And you can play it. And I found out there's an e thunk called an invisible rest. And it's an X. If you put an X in there, wrong, a little X in there, it's there. You can't see it but the program treats it like a rest. So if you're trying to play back the first line of a tune and it keeps skipping that note, put a rest. And if you wanna make it invisible, put a little X in there. Um, now, the next thing you wanna do is you want, you want to not just tie, you wanna slur a bunch of notes. And here we go back to our parentheses. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna slur from the A right here all the way to this note right here. So I put a parentheses in front of the A. And notice it says everybody gets slurred. 
So you have to end that slur. And you do that by finding the note you want to end on, so the E, and write the other parentheses. And there you go. If you open a tune, and I'm going to do this to some poor tune. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's a jig. If I put just one parentheses and not another one, oh, I got to edit it. It just goes nuts. So if you open a tune online and you see these huge slurs, somebody forgot to put an end on that slur. Or in some cases, they might have been trying to put a triplet and written uh, the triplet wrong. So that's just something to remember. You'll find you'll open up a lot of music online and go, where did all these slurs come from? There's a there's a mistake in there somewhere. All right, I'm gonna go back to my happy tune and expedite. And I'm gonna edit it. Uh, let's see. There's my happy tune all together. Look at all that stuff we've done. Um, slurs and ties can indicate bowings and syncopations. And uh, oh, repeats. Let me show you a repeat. Let's do my happy little little line I was working on there before. And let's get it back to a, a bigger size. What if I want to repeat this happy little tune? Well, if you look at sheet music. There's two little dots in a line. So we have two little dots in the form of a colon. It's right next to the L on your keyboard. You should hold the shift key and go colon. And now you have a repeat. So when you play your happy little tune. It repeats. The other repeats you could use is you could take out this, this little line in the middle and you put two colons back to back and you get a double repeat and it will double repeat if I play it. Or you can use first and second endings. Those go in, you just put a one immediately behind the, the uh, bar measure, uh, bar line, excuse me. And you get a first repeat. Well, I need a second repeat. So you put up here, immediately behind that line, you put a two, and you write whatever turns you on for your second ending. So F, D, e, D, E, which is nothing good. And then put a double, double line. It can either be just two double lines going up, or it could be the little uh, end bracket to make a nice dark line. Because if you don't do two lines, this, Second ending doesn't know where to end, so it'll keep going. And if you have another line of music below it, it'll draw that line across. So it'll find some place to stop until so it finds that double line. So make sure that whenever you do the first ending, you have a repeat. Same thing. If you don't have the repeat, that little line goes away and it gets really confused. This poor little program. They're good. They're not that bright. And make sure you have two. There you go. Um, and I'm going to do the next part really quick because it get, it, it, you could spend hours on this. But uh, if you need, for some bizarre reason, to make chords, there's two ways to indicate chords. And one is using the brackets again. So you go look, uh, your enter keyboard, enter key on the right side of your keyboard, and you go right up, and there's two notes and there's square brackets. So there, you type one, and it automatically fills in. And anything inside that will be treated, uh, if it's a note, as a chord. So uh, what's a good chord? How about G and B? And you, well, let's see. Maybe I could put that little X there so you can hear it. All right, Rob. New keyboard. There we go. All right, so if we play it, you get a ah, nice little thing. You could do uh, uh, brackets, and they're in the middle of the brackets. Let's see, A, C, E, that's an A, that's an A chord. And then to get out of the brackets, you can either use your uh, cursor and click, or uh, if you have arrow keys on your keyboard, just arrow to the right and it takes you right out. So if we're in the key of C, let's see, we go down to C, D, E, F, G, that's a C. So it just prints the chords out. You won't do this often. Sounds nice. Hey, it sounds really nice. 
But you don't do that often in traditional music. You don't write out chords. What you do write out a lot of is the double stops, like this, this first one here. Like if you're playing fiddle and you're up on the, uh, I'll kind of get rid of you guys. There they go. Uh, if you're up playing on the A string, you you might play a D chord or D double stop, and that would be A B C S A B C D D. Yeah, we would need a little, little D, and then you play the F sharp down below, and that is a since I'm not in the right key, I got to provide that. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Or you could play, if I had done it correctly like I meant to, and put a capital F, and it drops it like that. So double stops are done inside these brackets like that. Now there's even another way of doing chords, and it's a lot easier, and it's what you're probably going to use most when you're writing uh, like fiddle tunes. And I'm going to put these guys back. So here's my little cheap line of music. We're in the key of C. So let's go ahead and put a C chord symbol. And uh, I call them guitar chords, a lot of people do. And those are made with quotation marks. So the quotation mark is right here. Put one in and let's do a C chord. What do you do? You write C, put a quotation mark and you have a little C that shows up. Well, look at that, that is cool. Uh, let's do a D chord. D, uh, probably a minor is, I think the D minor. So let's put an M in there for, whoops, a little M means minor. You could write M-I-N, but that's taken up real estate. So let's just do a little M. And I think, uh, oh, and you gotta put the chord in front of the note. So I'm gonna, I'm uh, like I said, here's an E and I write a chord. And I think it's gonna be E minor. Music majors can correct me. And one of the problems I'm having, and you'll have, is uh, if you're writing a tune with a lot of lowercase notes, you put the caps lock key and you happily write away until you go above uh, that A or B, and then also you need little letters and you forget. So you've got to go back, you'll have, you'll have notes that are way out of line. And if you're writing a chord and you're in caps lock, you have to hold a shift key down to get the quotation mark, and if you forget and you write the E, because it's a capital E, you're actually already in capital, so now it's a little E. So that will bite you so many times. You have to go, oh, rest, go back, get the right one in. And the minor is a little one, so you gotta hold the shift key down. Um, let's just see if I've dorked it up entirely or whether it's gonna do this. It's playing the wrong chord. That's a gotcha. Uh, if you give chords to ABC, it will play them. And if you don't give them after you have, it'll play the last one it saw. So there's an E minor here and I didn't put all the chords the rest of the tune. So it's just gonna happily chunk along on that E minor till it hits the end of the tune. It will drive you nuts. In this program here, um, there's a little symbol that says don't play the chord. So if you're working on chords, Hey, they're not there. You can listen to the tune and then go back and add the chords and turn that off. And buried in the other program is the facility to do that. Um, but you can build up humongous chords. Uh, I won't go any further than say like, let's do a A, A seventh minor, oops, minor. Uh, let's see, nine. Uh, flat nine. I think that's how you do it. Yep. Which is just a really funky chord. And let's see what it sounds like. Play horrible. And not too bad. So any chord you can build can be entered into ABC in that chord. And that's the way you want to do chords for a fiddle tune. You want to put them up here. There's more rules on how they work, but that's the main thing. And last thing I want to show you is. Uh, if I can put little chords and quotation marks and have them pop up here above the music, can I put other things? Why, yes, you can. So let's go do that. But you have to be cautious with it. These are called annotations. Let's see, let's see. So we're going to put in a cheap line of music. 
A-G-F-D. All right. What if I wanted to say right here on this part or these notes right here, um, say you're a classical musician, you want to say Allegro. Well, you put a quotation mark and you write uh, Allegro. Hey, it said Allegro, cool. Um, we're not gonna do that, but what if you wanna say, uh, you know, you're talking to uh, somebody who didn't play this last time through. So you pay last time through. Well, that's cool. Um, what do you wanna say last beat? It says last beat, and it's gonna be hard for you to see. But if you look carefully here, you would note that that's not a B, that's a flat symbol because it thinks you're writing chords, very bizarre chords, mind you. And so it treats any little B or it treats any uh, carrot, which is a sharp notation or an equal sign, or not any, but most, it'll give you uh, the musical notation. Oh, not, not the, yeah. oh, pound, that's what, pound key, I think. There we go. It'll treat those symbols that you would use in one of these things as a part of a chord. So what you have to do is you have to tell it, this is not a chord, this is just an annotation. This is just a word I want. So I will tell you from now on out just to use a caret sign. And a caret sign is like, it's an up symbol. It says, put this annotation up above the note. Cause that's probably where you want it. You want this thing, last beat here or whatever. And it will not treat that B as a flat pound sign as a sharp or an equal sign, uh, you know, like as a chord symbol. There are other things I can change that carrot to the down low underline up, ah, it went below. That's kind of cool. Uh, you can use the two little arrows down on the bottom, the, uh, the left arrow goes to the left of the note right arrow goes to the right of the note. So you're probably not gonna use them often. The only time you'd use them is if you wanted to put uh, parentheses around a note that's in the guide, go look it up, it's cool. So that is the majority of the information on how just to enter notes in the basics. Um, I paired a half hour off of what I practiced for two times through, so I hope you're happy with that. So I'm gonna stop right here and I'm gonna turn this off. Well, yeah, I'm gonna turn it off. And uh, Rob, turn it off. How do I turn it for screen share? There it is. It's a red bar and a red line. Are there any major questions on what I've done before we kind of show you how you wanna look at a tune and chuck it into ABC? Hey, yeah, so everyone's on mute. So if you have a question, you're gonna to have to unmute yourself. So any questions? So I assume next, cause my question is exactly that, Rob. I wanna know how you take a tune that someone who's a friend of mine has done, but I do it in a different version or I have different chords. Okay. Walter, Rob, any rate. <laughs> it's easy. You just look at or it. Correct, mm -hmm. Or correct a mistake in an Elmo Wick tune, Walter. And, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> instead of having to bug my buddies, I could do it myself. So that's what I'd like, you know, how do you to go okay. in and just say, or just finding him and saying, I really like this. So that's one of the things I'd like the to The easiest but I think way. Good. The, Go ahead. The, the easiest way really is just to use the play function and play the tune and listen to it. And it'll become immediately obvious when you have put the wrong note in, the wrong chord in, uh, tied a note uh, wrong or something like that. And so that's really your best bet is you listen to it. So um, let me show you an, another program. And we'll use this for a while. This is the newer program. I need to figure out how to do this. This program is called Easy ABC. Um, yeah, you can kind of see that. Uh, and what this, this is the one that is currently out there and it's still under, people are working on it. So they're, they're keeping it current. This one will run under Windows. This one will run under Linux. I believe it will run under Mac because I think really Mac is kind of built on similar to Linux, whatever the core is. Um, 
and like I said, Raspberry Pi, but I can't help you at all with that. So the way this one works is very similar to the other one. It's a lot cleaner, a lot less stuff going on. It actually does less things for like maintaining files and all that, but it does all the important stuff that you would want out of just writing tunes and playing tunes and printing them. So um, let me just show you real quick the, the difference in this program versus typing everything in the other program. There are a few things in the other program you could click on, like you could do measure bars and repeats. You could click on a little symbol. In this thing, you can click on most anything. So um, down here, instead of having the, it's flip-flop. So the music's on top and the tune is on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is there's Coleman Mark. We'll just keep that handy, but I'm gonna start a new tune. And you'll notice over here, this is called ABC Assist. You can turn it off, but if you're new, I would leave it on because it says new tune, boink. And what it does is it gives me all the stuff that we want, you know, untitled. So, you know, it's Rob's little happy tune, Rob. Rob can't type, Rob's happy, happy tune. Oh, um, there's a neat thing to remember. If you type a title and it's like the happy tune, and you alphabetize your tunes by title, all the thes are gonna show up in one spot. So what you do is you take the T-H-E out and you move it at the end of the tune, you write a comma and you write the. And now when you alphabetize, it's gonna be with the H's, but up here, notice that it put the the. You can do it with A. You can do about anything you want if there's a comma. Uh, but we're going to leave it the happy tune. Okay. Unknown composer. Oh, I know who it is. We want to repeat that there. There's Rob. Origin. We'll, we'll get the origin. Let's see. Oh, no. the capital o. United States. Here we go. I can't type sometimes. I got a new keyboard. It's really cool. I can't type on it. All right. So now down here we have uh, 4414 and C is the key. That's where we're working before. Now, if I want to add notes, I can type them in or I can go over here. And remember, we're going to start on that middle C with a capital C. And here it shows you going right across. And then mm -hmm. there's the little C's going right across. So if we wanted to do what I did before, there's C, there's D, there's E, there's F. And here's the fun part in this one. Go one more note. Hey, put a measure bar in for me. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Um, so I can just do this and now let's say i want this note up here not to be a quarter note but to be an eighth i want it to be half a note length so i come down there's that little bar i remember that bar oh look at that so let's put another one in c do you want it to be half note length sure uh let's do an a but now i want that to be a half note come down double the note length. Look at that. Now I want to dot that sucker. <laughs> Look at that. And then we can go a little, little note. And then if I do another note, it puts the bar line in there. You can go down through here. You can tie it. You can change the pitch. You can go the note up, down, octave up. So like maybe I don't want this last A to be an A. I want it to be a B. So I go note up and there you go. Uh, I can insert all these decorations that beforehand I had to write out. I didn't show you how to do that. I apologize for that. Um, look it up in the book. Uh, Fortissimo. There we go. Let's make that thing loud. Let's go back and how do I get out of here? Uh oh. I'll remove that because I don't know how to do it. So you can do this. Plus, you can go ahead and just type. So I can go B, B, A, G, F, whatever. The one problem with, it's actually, it tells you somewhere in here, it's actually faster to type. But if you have trouble typing or don't want to type and you want help with all these little handy symbols, this is a very good little program for that. So like I want to repeat right here. Um, I can go end of repeated section. It puts it in for me. Uh, then I just start, I just type or space. I can change the key, I can change the meter, I can change the tempo. So I'm gonna make, start a new line. Now let's, let's change the, the key. Let's put it in G. Uh, G is one sharp. And then let's see, I guess I, space, I think, I don't know. 
And I'll hit repeat. How about that? Or not repeat, like key, enter a key. So now we go G, A, B. So now it's in a different key. So this is a handy tune. Um, if you play it, you, there's your buttons up here. You can play your buttons up here. So press. And if you'll notice, you see the notes are going in red. It shows what it's playing and down, no, not down there. Down here, if you hold a note, it shows up what note you're working on. So if you're editing and you're looking for something, you're down here, it's like, well, where is, where is this note? Oh, it's right up here. So this is a very handy little program. Like I said, it, the other one has a lot of stuff, utilities built into it that you'll have to figure out and this one takes a little more. Let me show you how aspect. So that's probably good for you. All right. So let us use. Go ahead. Uh, I just say we ahead. have a question from Teresa. Go ahead. Uh, oh, hello. Thank you. So just backing up a little bit, the reason you still have to know the tune, you still have to know the tune and you, would you be sitting there like I do with your fiddle? plunking it out and typing i mean i know it has a playback but you still have to know what you want to what these notes yeah. want to be so you might be at a piano or something yeah. um so really the allure here is that you're not with the pencil on staff paper like i do yeah writing you can it. you okay, can but, do that but you can also just go straight into doing notes so let me see if i can ah. Let's get rid of this whole happy tune here. Oh no. <laughs> All right. And we have the mandolin out. And we go, let's see. What's a good tune? What's a what do we know? Let's see. Okay, let's see. I'm on that's the D strings of Okay. So I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go bang them out real fast here. Oh, that's the wrong B. I wanna. Um, All right. So the the basic theory is similar. It's just a nicer, neater way to share tunes yeah. to other people, and it's awesome program too. Okay. Yeah. And and yeah. I, I would. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and I also think Rob will get into this. That um, he mentioned it briefly earlier that there are databases full of these tunes. Yeah. So that if you're like, oh, I just want to put some of these tunes that I like to play together so and I could put them on my iPad or whatever, you can find these tunes and you might be able to say, oh, my version's a little bit different. Well, then you can use these and you can just make the alterations or add the chords or things that would be your version. So you can do a lot of shortcutting by simply first checking to see if it's out there. And I think Rob and Walter, you do a lot of that too first. Oh, yeah. I mean, first you check yeah. to see has someone else done this <laughs> and save Absolutely. me a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other know. thing is it's free music, which means sometimes it's kind of wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So, oh yeah. So you end up fixing somebody else's problems, as as Mary Pat has pointed out. <laughs> okay. Rob, um, I have a quick one. Um, did yeah. you say that the last program did that transpose? The, yeah. These both these programs. Let me go back and I'll show you. Both these programs will transpose. So, um, this is the one I was working on before, and it's. There's a lot of stuff going on. You need to dig around and poke into it. Um, there are some guides on how to work it. It's translated from French, so it may be not the best at some time. But in this particular program, like say I want to transpose this somewhere else. So I go up to tools, tune tools, and I get a whole bunch of neat stuff. I've got, I can clean out line breaks, uh, a lot of weird stuff, chords. I can I can try to have it provide chords for me. And it says right off the bat, eh, it might not be the best, but it might find them. And then here's a transpose button. And both this and the other one, you have to know how many half tones you want to go up. Because, you know, it does a, a, a key is, you know, whole step, half step, full step, step. So like here we're in C and we want to make it in D. Well, let's see, C, C sharp, D. So it's two half steps. So I want to transpose up two half tones, and let's see if it works. Hey, look at that, we're now in D. Um, so yes, um, 
I'm not, I'm not going to get into the rest of the stuff, but yes, you can do that. And then the other one, I want to, uh, let's see. Uh, where to go? ABC. Uh, tell you what, I had a mangle Coleman's here. Uh, there's tools up here and settings. There's nowhere near as many. Um, settings. Where do we go with that? Ah, edit, transpose. And here's so you pick your semitone. So uh, here's Coleman's march in D. I want to make it to C, so we know that's two. So go to edit, transpose down two semitones, and there's Coleman's march in C. Oh, um, fantastic! Yeah, I don't know if this one has the pitch change. The other one you can change the pitch. So like, uh, if you listen to Bill Monroe, Bill Monroe is famous for tuning a half pitch off or more. So he'd say it's in the key of A and he's actually playing a G sharp or a B flat or something like that. So if you try to play along with the record, you go nuts. And it kept other bands, the, the slower bands anyway, from stealing this music. Um, that other one, you can do that. You can change the pitch up or down. So if you're listening to an old recording, you can, you can type it in in a key you would know today, but you can make it match the pitch they're playing in. Um, so yeah, if, you know, I think I showed you, I, I showed you my ugly hand scribbled note and you can, you can write from that. Uh, uh, or if somebody else has a sheet of music, let's go find a sheet of music. Let me see if I can do this. Um, um where do you put the chords in at? Uh, that is a skill. <laughs> okay. Here's Coleman's March. Um, this one, actually, this is interesting. This one here, I tried last night, and it darn near drove me nuts. I tried entering Coleman's March with this, and for me, it's so much easier typing. But you'll see that I did not enter the chords. Well, it just so happens I have my, uh, my cheapo Coleman's March music right here, and then I've got the little version of chords that mandolin players and guitar players like down here. So first I gotta go put it back in the right key. So let me do that real quick. Edit, transpose up to semitones. We're in D again. Okay. So you would look at, I'm sorry, because I can't do two screens at once. You would look at this thing and it says there's gonna be a D for the first measure, G, D, A. So you would just look at your music. You've written it in and it's like, well, I want a chord right here. So you put the chord in front of the note, it goes the, the first note it want to play it. So down here, here's that D. We're looking, oh, actually, this is the lead, this is the pickup notes right here. So we got to go find, that's an F. So the way in this program is very nice. You hit that and go, oh, it's in red. <laughs> it's going to save me. So I want to put in a D chord. So I put in a uh, quotation mark, D, oops, caps lock will get you. Uh, Rotation mark. And now there's a D chord. Well, I said the next one will be a G. So we'll go over right here in front of that thing. So I go find it. You can double check because, oh, it's red. Good. Okay. Well, it's a G note. You think, yeah, that would have a G chord. So we put a G chord in and it shows up here. And the next one, ha, it's a D, not an A. It goes with an A note, but it's a D chord. So quotation mark D, oop, wrong D capital D, there's a D, and then the next one is an A. So we're gonna go over to this note. I'm just gonna do the whole measure because it'll, it'll sound weird otherwise because it'll just play part. Go down to the next line and we're looking at, uh, ooh, more chords, D, A, two chords in one measure. So we're gonna put the D, quotation mark, D, quotation mark. And then we gotta go over to this, this C note. Let's see, you're gonna do your magic, there we go. So the C note is red. That's gonna get an A chord. And how do I know this? Well, cause I've got the music, you can go online and there's large collections of bluegrass and old time chord guides just for, just for banging out chords. So if you get a tune, you can put the chords in from that if you don't know them, cause I'm not the strongest chord guy. I have trouble sometimes you know, it's a, if it's a one, four, five, I can figure it out. If it's the weird ones, you know, the, the two chord or something like that, I often have trouble. 
And then if the guy got funky writing it, you know, I don't know. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for this note right here. That's an F. So here's that F and I want to put a D in here. And I'll leave a space. It, you don't have to have right down here. I don't know if you can see it. You don't have to have this chord symbol right here back and right up to the chord you played on. As a matter of fact, if you leave space, then you can find it a lot easier down the road. There's a lot of needing to find stuff down the road, honest, believe me. Uh, so what am I looking at? G, D, A, G, D, and then I need an A in this chord. And then we need a D in the two repeats. So we'll put a D. And because the second time through, you'll need that D, so you got to put it in the repeat. So we get it all in there. What does it sound like? Nice tune. Now, what if we screwed up and like this, this, this very first G, what if I had uh, screwed up and I, I'd written like A. All right, so I've changed this and you just play it. It'll tell you right away. Oh, actually it doesn't work, yeah, that, that works, okay. No, that was a bad, let me try something weird. <laughs> it worked. It did because G is the seventh of the A's. So it, yes, it is. <laughs> you just did one, five, seven, one. <laughs> yep. Actually, I like that. I like the progression a little better. I may put that in there. Well, and this is why people argue about chords because yeah. there aren't necessarily right and wrong answers. Yeah. It's a lot of it's personal preferences. Okay, so let's put in a, a real stinker. And well, can you put a double stop? A uh, double stop, um, or like a like your first note, which is an F sharp. Can you put can you put a harmony note above it? Yes, actually, what you do is it's called a slash chord. And let me let me put the proper key. Um, you want a bass? Are you talking? Do you want the bass note to be played? Maybe. Um, well, if you if you're down here. You can put, uh, let's see, it's GBD. Let's put the D on the bottom. It's called a slash chord. You see a little slash and the D? This is, this is C. Let's see, this is, let me see, T, E, F, G, A. Let's put the A on the bottom just for fun. And that will, it's, it's actually just a chord inversion. If you're familiar with that term, you're just taking one, two, three notes, and you're taking that top note and putting it at the bottom. You can put the, the middle note there. Doesn't always sound good, but it can be done. Or if you have what they call a bass run, like you can find the notes that go up or down uh, in the chord and put them on the bottom. So you hear that bass run, like you know, good bass players will do. You can do that. What um, I meant was in the melody, can you yep. write harmony in that melody? You can write harmony, um, but you have to write an entire second line of music. And that's, that's the graduate level course. I can teach you how to do it, but not here. Um, you can add a double stop. Like if you wanted, what did you want right here? Maybe a note? Yeah, just to demonstrate if you were going to put one in there. Yeah. Okay, what I would do is I'd figure what note do you want to play with this one? Are you, are you asking for a second person, a second fiddle harmony or a, a double stop? Yeah, second fiddle harmony. Okay, now what you'd have to do is you'd have to write a whole complete new song, and then you have to use these V commands, voices, and it works. Like I said, um, I've got piano music; it can be done. But I'll show. Let me show you what the piano music looks like. Well, I didn't want to throw a wrench in it. No, but it's it's you... doable and it works very well. Um, but well, if you did want to put a double stop on there. Okay, I'll show you the double spot. Okay, this is piano score right here. And, and I did this all in ABC notation. So it's, it's perfect piano score. But what you have is this is your top line, your voice one. So you have all that. And then you have to have uh, a whole new set for the bass. So you can do that. It just is beyond the scope of this 
<laughs> lesson. But if you wanted to do, uh, let's see, uh, if you would like right here, let's, let's see what would be a good, what, let's do an A right here. Let's change this to a, a low A or a D with a low A just because we can't. So you go down and you find that note. Here's the F. Um, so let's put a low A with it. And this, this double stops, use the brackets again. And now we're gonna take this F3 that's written outside. I'm gonna stick it inside the brackets with a low A. And we gotta make that low A three pieces long. And then we'll get rid of this. And you've got a G here. And of course we could always play, a, let's get rid of, let me fix the chords so that doesn't sound horrible. I'm just getting rid of those slash notes I threw in. Now here we can, we can do a, a G, an open G string and that would sound kind of cool. So I'll put the brackets, there's a G3 and now I need a low A3. All right, so now you've got two double stops. And it's just the A note. Uh, so let's see if that sounds any better. Eh, not the best, but. Um, the one thing on this program is I don't know how to make it just play part of the tune. Let's see if that does it. That's the wrong way. So let me try the second. The other tune, if you highlight the line, like this and you hit play, it just plays what you've highlighted. Now, this one goes right at the beginning. I don't know how to not make it do that. There's a there's another trick if you're editing and you wanna get rid of a line or just hide it, you look up on your keyboard above the five, there's a percent sign. So you hold the shift key, hit the five and it gives you a percent sign. And that line just disappears to the program. Uh, it's still there. But now if you want to play, now if I just want to play, this is the third, second line of the per, uh, tune. Now you say I just wanted to work on the B part of the tune. I do another little uh, percent sign and that line's gone. Like, look, now I can just play the B tune or the B part. And I didn't do the chord, so you don't hear them. So that's a trick for editing you can remember. And you can also, uh, you can add a comment or a note to yourself, just like programmers do, like uh, say, Patricia wants to know how to do a second voice. And it doesn't show up anywhere. It's not up in my little screen up here. I don't see it. But if I were to edit this tune and come across it, go, oh yeah, I forgot out. I'll do that for, Patricia or, you know, whoever. So that's like a programming comment if you've ever done computer code. If you're not, you're lucky. But. Rob, can you do the bass clef on this uh, easy ABC as well? Do the bass what? Bass clef. The, yeah. The, yeah. The um, bass the, to do bass, okay, let me, let me go back to my little happy tune here. And let's just mess with... Uh, let me go down from, let me, let me run it down from A, A, G, F, E. I'm going to scrunch it up here. D, we're just going to run it right down into the ground. So D, C, and then the next B would be up there, but I put A, um, and I can't get this up higher. Let me see. Can I, okay, well, I'm just going to add a lot of empty space. There we go. Now you can see it, maybe. All right. Uh, if I do the next note, it's an A or a B goes up, so I need to make it lower. I think lower, lower is your commas on these. So there's that, and there's A that, and then there's, uh, let's see how far we can go with this. Um, G that, and then F that. Oh, there we go. Now I found the bass clef. If you want to just stay in the bass clef, it's in the guide. You can go up here to the key, and you can do kind of do a, a double key. And what we'll say is key or K, you know, K, little letters, clef equals base. I think that's what it is. Uh, maybe not. Nope, 
Let's see. Uh, if you do that in, in some programs, you write, I'm pretty sure that's the notation you use is clef equals base. Then it will write everything in the base clef. So it, ah, there we go. No spaces between the clef equals and base. So now you're in the base clef and everything you write will be the same notes, but they'll be shown on a base clef. I think you can also do alto clefs and other things. Those are graduate level, but if you want to do a piano score, then you would have to do clef equals base and then write those notes out. Actually, I was trying to get a cello player to join us once. And I said, yeah, I can convert all this music so that a cello could play it and we could have a cello in the group. Cool. So that <laughs> this was something I was doing once. <laughs> it's, there's so much, it, it's very powerful, like I said. Who else has got questions? We'll just take Walter and I will just answer your questions. Uh, um, let me, if, if, if it is a lull, I'll throw out some troubleshooting stuff that I've discovered over the years. Um, I have a question. First yeah. of all, I'm sorry I'm late. Um, my, furnace kept, my furnace kept me up all night. But uh -oh. I know, it was bad. Um, my question was, oh, I forgot my question. Oh, is this a program? Is it called Easy ABC? This, yeah, this one I'm using here is called Easy ABC. And, and you can find it on the web. Did you pay for this? No, this is free. If you, uh, if you look at the link that's provided in both Mary Pat's email and my South of the River email, there's a link for a guide I put together. And at the back of the guide, there's a bunch of appendices. Yes, yeah, huge, don't print it. Um, but if you look at the back, there's a bunch of links um tell you what let me show though let me figure out where i am here uh new share uh that's that that's that all right i gotta go way down here let's get this down okay somewhere at the end of the oh there we go at the end of the guide there's a bunch of appendices that will and here's, here's other people's guides to using ABC notation. So if mine is like, oh my gosh, there's, there's online, you can click on them and go to them. Um, the one I think is really impressive, this guy's Guidos, man. It's like almost 200 and some odd pages long, but it's, it's far more detailed than mine. It includes more uh, different programs and steps. So some of these, programs I use won't do all the stuff it says because they're older and it's much prettier and, and, and it's proofread and it looks nice and all that. So this is a really good one. These other one, this one is downloadable as a, a, a PDF file. So you can take it with you. And there's just all sorts of other things out there that you can look at that other people did what I did. Then the next appendix is uh, software you can get. So the first listing is uh, ABC notation like is the mother load. This is the page by the guy that invented ABC notation. And he has a huge link to software packages. The only problem is a lot of them no longer work. He compiled as many, and a lot of them are in languages that you've never skink and, you know, Lisp and weird things like that. A lot of them are command line language. And the dirty secret is this easy ABC and ABC Explorer actually are just the front end for two or three little command line uh, programs that they install when they you run. And they're the ones that actually take your letters and numbers and create the music. So there's these little core programs floating around and everybody writes the front end. And some of them don't work that well anymore. So here's ABC Explorer. That's the big busy yellowish tinted one I was using. Then here's the easy ABC. Went away. There it is. And it used to be uh, done by Niels Lyberg in Sweden, and that page no longer works. So if you go to the reference in that, that ABC notation, it's going to take you there. It doesn't work. It's now on SourceForge, which is a programming uh, repository for people like Walter that understand that stuff, not hackers like me that go, what? Um, and then I included how to find where. Easy ABC is hidden in a Windows download form. So you download that and install it. 
Otherwise, you'll have to go figure out how to install all these weird programs. They, they keep wanting to use Python 3 and other things. No, I'm not doing that. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, and then there are some other programs. Uh, this MC Music Editor is an interesting one because it's brand new. Um, uh, and it does a lot like the AZ ABC where you can click on notes and stuff and it fills in for you. They use the symbol of the note instead of just a letter. So it might be easier. The problem is, is they have come up with a variation of ABC notation, which could be useful, but is not standard with everybody else's stuff. So if you're not careful and you go out of your way to save it as ABC, it will save it in their format, which will not work with everybody else's stuff. It's a good program. And the really cool thing is, is it prints searchable PDFs. When you use Easy ABC or ABC Explorer, you're just getting pictures of music. You can't look up the titles. And so that's been a, a fault of all the tune books I've put out for years is you can't say, well, I wanna play whiskey before breakfast. You type whiskey and you know it's in there and it says can't be found. If you use MC Music Editor to create your tunes into PDF, it will create tunes you can search a lot of the text, not just the titles, but a lot of the text, the little notes I put in the bottom. And I should talk about that in a, a minute or two. Um, so that's something to look at. There is Trad Musicians, that's an Android program. That's the one uh, Walter has. I finally got it on my little, uh, I got a Christmas birthday present. So I have a, um, a tablet, a Fire tablet. And you can put, um, if I can remember how to use a fire, no, that's not how to use a fire tablet. Uh, you have a program and it doesn't look like much right there, but it's, no, it's terribly quiet and I don't know how to use a tablet. I'll get it upside down. I'll get it upside down, that's fine. Going in the low ground. And Walter will answer all your questions on using a uh, trad musician. <laughs> if anyone has any. Um, if you have an iPhone or an iPad, there is a program called TuneBook. And I won't start it up, but it, it's very similar. It uh, is kind of clunky to get around, but once you get around, you can store your tune books in it, you can play them, you can edit. So what I did is I came up with a follow on. Oh, let me cover these two. If you don't have any of those programs, and you don't want to get those programs. There's two web pages that you can find ABC tunes or write an ABC tune and just stick it in there. And it will work, it will translate a tune. Let me see. Uh, nope. Uh, I got Let me let me start a share here. I'm all over creation here. Ah, here we go. Here we go. All right. This is mandolintab.net, and what you can do is you can go find an ABC tune and give me a second while I'm in the background. I'm going to go find me an ABC tune here. Uh, here we go. Um, tune, copy tune. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste a tune in here. So that's just whiskey before breakfast. And on this website, you can look and it says, do you want to transpose meaty broken notation? I'm not sure. Tablature, automatic line break, all this weird stuff. No, I just want to submit this tune and see what this tune is. So I go submit. It thinks for a while, and there it is. It comes back with the sheet music and a MIDI file, and you can download the MIDI file, a PDF, share this tune with other people. This is a fun button, recent conversion. You just click on it and shows what other people have been doing in ABC. So if I wanted to save this tune as a PDF file, I would just click PDF. If I want to save the tune to hear how it goes, I hit the MIDI file. So that is one of the two websites out there you can do this. And let's see, the other website is listed in 
Uh, or, or you can print it. Yeah. Right there. Just boom, yeah. you can print it. Yep. So there's another one that does that. It's a slightly different format. It's Colin Hume. So if you get this, uh, the guide and just click on whatever one, it'll take you right there and you can play around with whatever you want. Uh, and if, and just to make life a little easier, I have the cheapo guide to using ABC Explorer, Easy ABC, and the iOS TuneBook one. And that's Appendix B2. Because I was late in putting it in. And so it needs to go here. So that's B2. It tells you how to create a tune. It shows you, you know, the steps to take and some of the icons you might have to click on to get a new tune. You know, you're like, create a new tune. It comes up with this, fill it in, fill it in, fill it in, go from there. Um, save a tune. The extreme basics on entering music into a tune. Uh, and just uh, save your work, how to save it. You know, some are a little complicated, some are pretty darn easy. Press save. Uh, some of the buttons you might need to press to play your tune. So that's all in that guide if you need it. It's just, it's just the very, very, very basics. And everything after that, you're on your own. Or you can call me and we'll answer questions. So who's got other questions? No questions at all. Um, well then, tell you what, let me go back to my overall guide here. Uh, let me throw out some things I have discovered over the years in um, trying to do ABC stuff. When you open, uh, if you open a tune, an ABC tune from another site and there's a lot of weird symbols in it, chances are really good that they either used an annotation or a chord with quotation marks and they forgot one side. So it assumes all that music you wrote out is actually part of either, it's, it's not an annotation, it's now everything is a weird symbol. So if you wrote, start your piece here, it's gonna see that S as the symbol for a senyo, a sign and write that. T, well, that's a trill and it puts a trill in. A is a little A, I don't know. Uh, so if it's a lot of gobbledygook, somebody possibly forgot the quotation marks or, and I got a whole bunch in there, um, ABC was created about 20, 30 years ago and the standard keyboard characters were called ASCII, A-S-C-I-I. -I. And there was 127 basic ASCII keys. So it's all the letters on the keyboard, uppercase, lowercase, all the numbers, uh, commas and periods and all that. But there's a lot of in a lot of people that speak French, and this is really, what about the accent they go and you know, you know, and and the the Swedish are going, I need a little circle on my A, and all these people said, we well, need something more, so they came up with Unicode and UTF-8 and UTF-16 and Walter knows, I don't know, uh, but they're expanded categories, so you can write Sinhalese and Japanese and Chinese, and uh, some of these code systems are, they're what they use to create websites and internet pages and HTML. So one of the things they have, and I'm going to see if I can show this. And I realized when I saw it, oh, I dorked that up too, darn it. Um, uh, which page is that? Um, this is all recorded. Yes. And you're going to send out the link to watch the recording. Mary Patwell. Oh, thank you, Mary Pat. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, for you, Patricia, the world, I tell you. All right. This is just, I don't know if... Oh, I, just want, I just want the moon. Yeah. <laughs> it, changed, it changed my formatting on me, but you can still kind of see uh, when I print out an, AB, an older ABC format and I print a quotation mark, I get these... Uh, I get these straight up and down typewriter quotation marks. But newer machines have what they call smart quotes. So there'll be uh, the left one angles to the left, the right one angles to the right. And unfortunately, when I pasted this, it changed the format. This format looks like two little tadpoles, two little tadpoles circling to the right. And on this side, two little tadpoles circling up to the left. Um, and these are not the same characters as that. 
And so if an older ABC program gets these older characters, it messes with it. Let me see if I can do that. I don't know if I can. Yeah, it's it's ugly. Um, I'm gonna, oh, here's a, here we go. We're whiskey before breakfast. I'm gonna change one of these quotes to a smart quote. Let's see if I can do that. See if it's gonna work for me. It may not because, oh, there we go. Look at that. What the heck? If you see this stuff right here, what? Um, it's all, I, I can't even show it to you. It's that little weird quote is in there. So if you copy and paste a tune from the internet and you just get the weirdest stuff, chances are they use smart quotes and all that. The brute force method is you sit there and you look and if it doesn't look right, you get rid of it and you replace it. If you are a little more fancy, what I do is I copy the tune into a word processor and then I tell it to go find all those. I do a find and replace and I've automated this thing called a macro and that's, Walter can teach him macros. He knows all that stuff. Um, but I just have it go through and find all the smart quotes and the smart commas and the smart apostrophes and replace them with what they call dumb quotes and dumb apostrophes and dumb commas. And that will get rid of a lot of that gobbledygook. Well, do our computers, are they smart and dumb? And how do you tell most, them? Most modern computers are smart. So most modern, uh, if you use like uh, the newer versions of Microsoft Word, or if you use Word Online, or if you use Google Docs, or if you use iOS, you know, Apple, iTunes, they default to the smart quotes and all that. Um, let me do something real quick here. Gonna... And this is why I like using Notepad. Yeah. <laughs> the, the simplest, dumbest thing. <laughs> because I, it I, does exactly what I want it to do. Yeah, if you if you have a Windows computer buried in there somewhere is a little program or app now they want to call their programs app called Notepad, and it writes just like this thing prints out. It uses dumb quotes and dumb stuff. So if you type them in, let's see if I can pull one up real quick. Uh, let's see, new. No, I don't want a text document. All right, so I gotta do one more share here. I'm getting better at this, let's see. Did that work? Yeah, okay. Um, this is a note text document, notepad. Notice down here in the bottom, it says UTF-8. So it is using one of those systems that can do the smart and dumb quotes, but if you just type quotes, let's see what we get. Uh, hello world. All right. The fact that these two little notes are these two little commas, if you can see them, go straight up and down. That means it's using the dumb quotes, which is what you want. Um, you could, you can't really change. I don't think you can change that in this. No, you can't. Uh, save as. Does it allow you to do that? Uh, down here. Uh, okay. If you, you write this all, you can copy and paste it into the older uh, ABC programs and be fine. Uh, and we'll just leave it at that. Um, some of the newer programs might be able to translate that for you. I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh, I could always try it by copying it into something, but so notepad on a Windows computer. I'm not sure what a Mac has to do that. Um, it's kind of interesting, and I think I will. I will do this here. I will try to I'll try to tell my. Um, I'm trying to do something with my iPad. How do I do this? Share content. So this ought to be interesting. Screen. Start it. So let's see if things change and look real funky here, real quick. I gotta do that. I gotta stop share. Uh, let's see. Let's see if this works. 
Hey, it worked. Look at that. Son of a gun. Um, just briefly, this is that. Um, let me get rid of it so we can start from the beginning. Uh, on this, I can't point out anything to you. I can just show you three rows down. Uh, third one in is a, a orange thing called TuneBook SD, and that is the Apple uh, iOS program I use for ABC. So there you've got an ABC program right there, the Tune La Belle Blanche, which is one I heard Pamela Longteen play. It goes like that. So you can play music. You can make new tunes, I think. No. I want to add tunes. And there's instructions how to do it because it's confusing as all get out. But there is the new tune thing. It's very similar. You have the tune showing on top. You've got all the same information on the bottom. And notice how it puts a space between the T and the new tune. So if you added this to a big tune book and sorted it, it would be the first tune you saw. So first thing I would do is get rid of that space because we don't need it. And let's see if, what quotation marks look like. So let's do a quotation mark and find that. Hey, it's dumb quotation marks. That is great. So I can put a C chord in there. And I can write C, D, E, F, G, whatever, and play it. All right. That's all I want to show there. Um, but what I do want to show you on the iPad itself, let's see, how can I do this? Do, 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 do. Uh, all right, I'm going to write a note to myself. And you'll see the keyboard on the bottom. And I think you'll see it when I move it. So I'm going to say, hi, Rob. I'm going to, hi, Rob. And I want a weird, uh, a weird letter. So I'm going to hold the A key down and see how it pops up all these choices. So I can do all those weird diacritical marks right there. Um, or if we do the same thing with the quotations, you see the quotations, I hold it down and I can do that funky quotation. I can do that funky quotation. I can do the French quotation marks, you know, they're so cool. So you can do stuff in a text editor in iOS, an iPad, iPhone, where you can tell it exactly what little type of notation you want to use. Let's see. So I'm going gonna, gonna to kill that right there. So there's there's possibilities of doing that. So most of your software nowadays defaults to the, um, the smart quotes and all that. So you have to go out of your way. Like Walter says, find a notepad, text pad, some kind of editor, text editor that doesn't, if you don't want to work in that program. Um, let's see what other fun things. Uh, one of the things we didn't talk about is sometimes you'll be you'll be doing a score and it'll go really long and then flip flop. So there's very few like five, six measures on the top and three on the bottom. And it's a problem because I found the right way to do it. and It doesn't work in all the programs. Um, it's it's let's see if I can do this here. All right, I'll go back to my happy tune and I'll write a tune real quick. Oh, that's just whiskey before breakfast. Uh, you can see this here is kind of a longish piece because there's all this double stop. So it makes your line really long. So what if I wanted to go like, well, I'm gonna move this down so I can see the line. So I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move this measure to the next line. Whoa, dude, that's a really long measure. How about I move this one down to the next line? Whoa, and sometimes you'll see stuff like this, go, what is going on? And you look and you'll see where somebody split these measures up. And there's two things you can do to control whether these measures all get on the same line of music or they don't. And the first one 
is if you look at your right inner key and just above it, that's where the bar line lives, the uh, bar measure bar line lives. The bottom symbol is a, is a backslash. So if I do a backslash, it's going to join whatever's on this line and on that line down here. And if I do one more, now it's like I didn't do anything. I mean, I, I didn't change this lineup. So there's like, they just say, okay, when you get to the end here, oh, go down and add that. Oh, go down and add that. Now, if I want to say, nope, 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 I just want two measures on the first line. What I use, and I, this is not what you're supposed to, but it works, is you use an exclamation point. If you want to be proper, you have to go up and add a directive. And a directive looks like something with two quotation marks. And I think it's line break. I think that's the, the word they want to see, line break. And then you put a dollar sign. And then I'm supposed to put a dollar sign here. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But you're going to have to put this little instruction line into every tune that you do individually or in the top header of a tune file. And some programs it works, some programs it doesn't. Let me see if I can do a dollar sign down here and make it work. Let's see. Oh, it's working now. Okay. So now that's how you're supposed to do it. What I find is if I get rid of that, the dollar signs are, don't mean anything anymore. And let's go back and get rid of this dollar sign, see what happens. Nothing. Let's combine lines with the backslash to combine again. All right, we'll do the backslash so they're combined again. Now let's see what happens if I do an exclamation point. It says, okay, that's a line break. It says everything after this goes to a new line. So if you want to put in the line break code in the dollar sign, that's what you're supposed to do. Um, I cheat, sorry. That's the one thing I, I tell you to cheat, and it works. And you'll see, mo I've never pulled up a tune where they had dollar signs. I've never found one. It, they all have exclamation points. So, um, Anything other people have? I've got 10 minutes, and let me see. Uh, oh. Ron, Ron yeah. um, I was looking at your links to download the Easy ABC yesterday. And I noticed that one of them said that there were certain other pieces of software that I needed on the computer in order to operate that. Um, yeah. What's, um, yeah. Uh, I haven't downloaded in a while to find out if it includes them or not. They usually tell you what they are and the easiest way to find them is just go ahead and Google the exact name of them and then download them all. I, I really didn't have time to set up how to do that for each machine and each piece of software. Uh, I intend to put out a revision and when I do, I'll notify you and that would be a good thing to put in there. But it, it, it is getting, like I said, it used to be very easy. You would just find, just like any other program or shareware or whatever, you just click on it, download it, install it. The geeks have taken over. They want you to install all the stuff by yourself because that's the best way to do it. Build that bridge. Well, first you create a hammer in your forge and then you build a saw now i just want i want the bridge i don't want all i the I, I was just wondering if that's any potential of giving me other problems on the computer uh it program. shouldn't get no it shouldn't give you any problems on your computer it's just if they don't get installed correctly then the easy abc will not do certain things that's the problem okay so I think I left a Windows link and I'm hoping if you click on that, it goes ahead and just downloads everything you need. If it doesn't, yeah. I apologize. But like I said, that's another very lengthy appendix. So I'm going to give you yeah, my one. It, it looked to me like it was pretty straightforward. I was just wondering. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the actual programs are very small programs and they're, they use, again, these little uh, uh, character symbols to create all the lines and the notes and the dots instead of letters and A's and B's and C's. Okay. So Thank let you. me show you the, the last thing that I recommend um, that really is not a standard, but a lot of people do, or I do anyway, 
uh, say, I've got this tune, Whiskey Before Breakfast, created it to Andy DeCharles. I'm like, what if I want to write a night note to somebody and say some information below the tune about the tune? Well, what most people have been doing, there's two little header symbols you can use. And one is a little W with a colon, and that lets you write lyrics. And there's a little very basic appendix that talks about how to do a lyric underneath each line of music. Um, because you got to break up multi-syllable words and some notes, some words have like three or four notes for one word. So read the appendix. The other uh, version is a capital W and you just write a capital W with a, uh, a colon. And let me make sure you're seeing this. Ah, what happened here? Are, are you seeing this uh, ABC Explorer program? I put my iPad down and it all went to heck on me. Resume. Uh, yes, we are. Okay. Um, okay, good. Uh, so I want to make a note. So people would use down here a W. Let me add some, you know, some space here so you can see what's going on. And they'd write it. So like, uh, and the, the jarless. Was a oops, was a multi Now there's a note, and you can write little notes down there and all that. I don't recommend using the W because that's for lyrics, and I like to try and keep stuff straight. So what I do is another text directive, and there's an appendix where I get into directives and field directives. You get the two percent signs, and you write the word text, and you leave a space. And then you can write anything you want again. The uh, jarless was a multi fiddler. And it does two things. One, it lets you know it's not really a lyric. And two, it's it kind of moves, it starts, you know, it's seven letters over. That might be useful when you only get so many letters across the page. Um, so I would recommend if you want to write something below your tune, you use this. Uh, percent sign, percent sign, text and a space, then type whatever you want. The problem, like I said, the problem is you can go like, well, let's see, uh, uh, he, he, uh, I can't write it anymore. Huh? He lived in Manitoba. And he wrote many tunes, and it's, it looks like it's very nicely printing out down here. So I got plenty of room. I'll write some more uh, tunes. Uh, for his uh, for his friends and meet stuff and blah 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 blah. Oh, okay, that's a little too long. So I'll make it go back. All right, so it's just as long as the music. And then you want to print it out. And I'm just going to do some stuff that would. Indi this is what it looks like if you just want to print a tune out. You go tune export tune. I'm going to make it into a PDF file, and it pops up this little window and. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on here? That note, that, that stuff went way off the edge. So it looks like Andy DeJarlis with Matilda. Wait a minute. So the problem is, is you are seeing one size font here and what gets printed out is another size font. So the cheap trick is that I've been using for years is I came up with a little line of text and let me grab that, that is in the appendix. Uh, I got to move things around on my screen. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this done right. So I go back here and I add in this non printing line. And I don't know if I can Let's see. What is it? Oh, yeah. So this is line that goes across the top. And as long as I make it about to that line, it's gonna stay within the music. So then you'd have to move the next stuff down and write that text thing again. And you can write whatever you want as long as it is about along that line. So now when you try to print it, tune, export tune, PDF file, and you get a picture of it. And you look up there and it kind of gives you a preview of what's going on. 
you'll see that it's now within that line. And sometimes it'll be well within the line because it's a proportional font. It does magic. That's a cheap trick that I've been using for years. So you'll find a lot of my tunes. I don't go back and clean these out all the time. So you see this, this non-printing bar shows how long a sentence can go on a printing paper. What? It's a cheap trick, it works. That's my, that's my best cheap trick. <laughs> There's so much more you can get into. You can do multiple voices. You can do, like I said, alto clef, bass clef, uh, printing out tune books. You can print the entire file. Um, you can print out individual tunes, um, both Easy ABC and AB Explore, ABC Explorer use different means, but you can select tunes out of a file and just print those tunes. It's actually a little easier in the newer easy ABC, there's less steps. You just click on the ones you want, say export selected PDF and out they go. So tons of stuff to learn. I hope I hit the basics. I'm gonna quit talking and just take any questions and we'll wrap it up in a couple of minutes. Yep, so we got a couple of minutes if there's any last questions. Hey, thanks Rob for doing this. I You're welcome. I'm very scared to um, do anything on the computer, but <laughs> start off with a little information. Maybe I'll get closer to trying. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank and, you. And, you're welcome. And sorry, and sorry for barging in late. Um, no, <laughs> no problem. I was like on my phone, couldn't find my computer, and bumbling around. So there you go. <laughs> Mary, Mary Pat's taping it. You can go through and be bored on your your own time later. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, you so. and me both, Pamela. Sounds scary, don't it? <laughs> I really like that e that easy ABC. I thought that oh. was an approachable yeah, that, one. And that's then, what I'm thinking. I might try that one. I, I would know. recommend that to anyone looking because it's probably going to set up easier and use easier, and it'll it'll be around probably longer. I'm I'm just dreading Windows 11 and finding out that that ABC Explorer doesn't work because it's got a lot more like file utility tools and handy tools and stuff. One of the neat things the easy ABC does is it does insipits. And sip it is just a little snippet of a manuscript or a tune. So you can go into it and say, give me the first two measures of every tune in this file. And some files, it doesn't work. I think it's the way the tunes are set up. They've got too much extra junk in them. But if it's a basic file, like you could get your Irish tunes and blip, 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 you have a sheet with like 10 columns, two tunes, so it's like 20 tunes. Just the first two bars. How many times you going? How's that go? I get the. Can you come the first two? Bars? Yes. So that. Yeah. Like the what's other one the doesn't. Key? Do that. How does it start? <laughs> so look for insipits. I n c i p i t s. And it for a smaller, easier made file, it works great. Highly recommend. Other questions. Well, I thank you very much. And like I said, I will probably update my guide because I didn't do that. Yeah. But, um, or as soon as you pray, just like, oh, I should have done that. Uh, well, and, as, I met, yeah, as I mentioned in the chat, I will be posting this in on YouTube. If you, um, I'll just put the links in all the usual places. But if you're not getting stuff in the newsletter or Facebook and want to make sure you get the link, just shoot uh, your email to msfafiddlers at gmail.com and I'll make sure you get the link and any of the other information. So, so well, thank you so much, Rob. We really appreciate all your hard work on this. This and has Walter. been something yeah. we've, and Walter, thank you.